Hello everyone. Thank you so much for coming to Graphicsly Clip Studio Paint Character Design Workshop. In this workshop, six artists will present across the two-day event. Each artist will cover a different topic in the character design process. We are excited to learn with you. I'm your host for the session, Mario Quinones. Before we start, we have some housekeeping items to go through. This session will be approximately 60 minutes long. Use the link in pin message in the chat to ask a question. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. Please re respect the presenters during the sessions and only self-promote and exchange social media info during the commercials. All the sessions will be uploaded to YouTube later on. This workshop is brought to you by Graphicsly the official distributor of Clip Studio Paint in North America, South America, and Europe. We can't do this without our amazing sponsors, Clip Studio Paint and Wacom. Clip Studio Paint is a versatile graphics app, best suited for drawing and painting, to create a wide range of content. With a wealth of unique features, it helps to create anything from illustrations over manga to concert art and animation. Whether professional or hobbyist, Clip Studio Paint's natural drawing feel, along with its comic and manga features, it's loved by artists from all around the world. And built specifically with the artists in mind, Wacom's renowned pressure-sensitive and battery-free digital pen tablets and pen displays allow countless artists and designers to realize their creative visions. The first session just the first session Jester is presented by Ergo Josh. After two years of experience working as a design professional at a local architecture firm, Josh now pursues his art career full-time as a, a visual artist, mentor, and educator. Josh is best known on for his YouTube channel, Ergo Josh, where he focuses on sharing his experiences and artistic knowledge through enjoyable educational videos. Now I'll pass the session to Josh. Thank you so much. Is everything? All good? Okay, cool. Um, hey, everybody. I'm Josh. And thank you so much, Mario, for that introduction. I really appreciate it. And yeah, I am a visual artist, first and foremost, but I also do a lot of educational and, you know, motivational stuff on YouTube. That's probably where you know me most from. Um, but you also would have noticed that through all the stuff I do, I love to draw people and characters. That's my number one thing. And something that I have found is really helpful in the process to get started and to keep through the whole process is gesture. So I'm not gonna talk about the stuff you've probably already heard of, the tutorials you can find anywhere online, like how to draw, you know, how to do gesture drawings, line of action, all that. I wanna tell you about the stuff that is actually going to be important for your character designs, things that are gonna help you express your character better. So for example here, I have some examples of obvious, you know, types of references that you would always look for when you want to practice gesture, you know, with a very clear line of action like this here. Like if you look at this person sitting, they're leaning back. This guy is throwing this like javelin and he's leaning and arching his body forward. You got all these nice arcs in his body. This runner here, um, this person with the baseball bat, it's all really easy to draw and have gesture in them. It's it would be pretty hard not to have gesture when you're looking at these things. But I've found when you're designing your own character, a lot of times you're looking at drawing very static and still poses and images. So for example, you can look at these and you see most of them are standing up straight. And I know that's gonna be how most of you are drawing your characters, at least in the beginning, that's how I do it. But it's still important to have gesture in these poses because you can tell a lot with that gesture. So. Although gesture can be great for making your drawing just look more alive and you know better and more 
like you actually know what you're doing, it's really helpful to just bring a lot more expression and appeal. So I'm going to show you some examples of work that I've done in the past and talk more about a little bit why gesture is important, what it can do for you. Then we're going to get into a sneak peek for a character that I am designing currently for a future draw this in your style that I plan to do pretty soon and show you my process for that and how I'm trying to think about gesture throughout that design process. And then we're going to do some demos and I'm going to show you what I think about when I'm trying to look at an image and get the gesture out of it. And then hopefully we'll have some time to polish one of them up. So yeah, let's get right into it here. So for these ones here, these are a few drawings that I did earlier, sketches really, of Jinx when Arcane came out. And I really had a great time with all of these characters trying to figure out how to get this character of her to come through with all of the different lines and anatomy that I would um, pay attention to. And moving on to this one, these are just different random characters from Pinterest. I was studying clothing here. And one of the things I want you to notice is that when it comes to clothing, a special thing that I don't know most people think about is you can actually include the gesture with the clothing itself. So the clothing that you see here is not exactly how it was in the reference. You can see I made the choice to make this a very specific arc a line coming out like this because I loved how she was leaning back here like that. And I really wanted to juxtapose that. So creating this to kind of balance it out was really, really helpful. And I did that again with her head here. So it's kind of mirroring that shape there. And so the gesture becomes an overall kind of balance and understanding of the shapes and not just how fluid and flowy your line is. Um, when we look at other parts here, some of these characters are more successful and not, so I think it was good to still include them. For this person, this person is very quirky. I, I imagine them to be like a like a character from, what would it be, like Big Hero 6. I was thinking of like, how could I like mix and match some of the characters from there? But unfortunately, it just doesn't really show much. She's standing up straight. Her hair is very straight and rigid. Um, she's leaning back a little bit, but it doesn't really accentuate that character, unfortunately. So. From there, I tried to do some more iterations of different characters. But again, I was focusing on clothing here, so it wasn't a big deal. Next, we can move on to some that I found very, very helpful. And this is a thing that I want you guys to pay attention to. I'm going to talk about kind of two ways to focus on gesture. And the second one is going to be using gesture in the details. And this is a great way to help build and kind of shape your balance between knowing anatomy, knowing all the details, knowing how folds work, knowing how hair works, whatever thing you know or don't know, you can use gesture to help you get there or fill in the gaps. Um, so for example here, the hands here, I actually have no idea how the hands were supposed to look. Um, if I switch to pink here, and when I actually found a reference for this hand, I didn't even like how it looked. All I knew was I loved how this arc was, and I wanted to keep the fingers moving in that arc. And I would just look at my own hand to kind of figure it out. And so from there, that helped me figure out how to get the rest of the hand to look good. Um, when we look at all of the little jewels and kind of little pieces on her neck piece there, I didn't really know how to get it across. I haven't studied that kind of thing before yet, but I knew I wanted that kind of feathery, fold like texture on there. So I really just had fun and let my brush do the work. And I kept going in a pattern around there. And it really helped me bring out that interest in the texture there. And then for this character, all of the little details in the face here, I just had a great time pulling out these different shapes using a lot of gesture for my lines and how I would cut out little bits and pieces for her hair to suggest a shadow or um, a highlight later on when I start to color. That was very, very helpful for me in this case. And then for the last set of examples here, this is a character I did. Um, and one of the fun things about it is I love to use really just simple arcs to draw for a lot of the arms and legs and the poses like this. So I'll do something like that. And then from there, I'll just take, okay, well, you know how with the leg, the, the common thing you wanna do is you want to offset some curves like this, right? This is pretty much how almost every single part of your body looks because what you have here is you have a straight, then you have your knee here. This is gonna be your calves. And then this is gonna be where your feet come out. Then this is gonna be where your, I believe your sartorius is gonna come down from your hip 
and then this is the other side of your knee that's straight this is going to be the outer side of your thigh and then that kind of comes down until where your adductors come out so that's getting a little bit into anatomy but you can see how that all started with those three curves i started with at the beginning here right and so that's the key so when i do this first line here that's the overall arc i want then i can go back in and say okay i want this curve to be this one and then i want this one right here to be for her knee and then i want another curve here to kind of come back and then melt into her hip there and so that's how i start to add those details without even having to focus on the anatomy first and it adds a lot more interest to the drawing because i started with that big overall curve to really give her that planted grounded feeling like there's pressure coming down on top of her and she has to kind of make a shape with her legs to support her that way and gesture can also be a way to use graphical elements and really tie them in with the drawing that you want to use so for this one i have a woman lying on the ground and there's these different shadow shapes on the ground itself that are coming up and interacting with her skin and her hair and the different folds in her shirt there and i just wanted to allow this kind of tense area here to kind of shoot out like this and it just created a nice balance and dynamism to the drawing here just by focusing and letting myself um it's kind of contradictory focusing but relaxing at the same time to feel what's going on with this outer line here think about expanding outwards and just allow my lines to flow outwards like that um, same thing here i really tried to use that with the hair and how that would work there um, and i would always start with bigger shapes you can see these lines here i erased after the fact, but I started out with an arc like that to try to get placement for the fingers. I always do that. Um, it always helps me get the fingers to look right because I find sometimes looking at a reference and trying to do it perfectly just doesn't cut it. Trying to make a shape that looks cool and then figure out where the hands go after that can be really, really helpful. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and jump into my character design here. So I don't know if I'm gonna have a name that I settle for her yet. So far it's May but we're going to see. She's about, I'm thinking, a 16-year-old schoolgirl, and she is very shy, sensitive, emotional, but very joyful and happy and very loving person at the same time. And so I have a few different sketches that I started here where I was trying to figure out how do I get a pose to express who she is and get the viewer to feel what I want them to feel when I came up with this character. So um, with this first one, I wanted to kind of have this feeling of being shy and withdrawn. So you can see there's this arc here with her back. That's going to be an arc that you see me use a lot, trying to get her to hunch over. Um, and then you can see here, this one is going to be her just being happy um, and being playful. And so here I have the arc going in the same direction here, but it's on the front of her body which is being open, right? It's just releasing yourself. Your, your chest is open, it's free. Your arms are kind of behind you. They're not in front of you protecting yourself, right? Um, and she's standing up straight. And so I try to look at different variations for that. You can see I'm trying to play with the arms to kind of push that even further. Um, I thought about doing them to the side directly. I thought about doing them up like this because it seems like, oh, it's like a Y shape. You're up, you're standing, it's open. She's happy, she's smiling. Um, but here was another version where I started before that, where the arms were down, but I was thinking that doesn't really show what I wanted. Right. So these things are, it's not so much about the pose. It's like, what can I do to show this feeling and emotion? You really don't even need to draw the arms to do that. You can just play around with the gesture and see how can I get this feeling across. And for this one, I was, I wanted to show her on the ground caring for an animal that she found because she loves animals and nature. Um, but I found that the legs open, although it did have a very open feeling for it, like it was very impromptu, I wanted to keep that personality of her kind of background in there because it's a pretty strict environment that she comes from in school. That's going to be the dynamic about her character. She's this open, very free loving person, but there's a lot of restrictions and rigidity um, with her family and her schooling. So I want to kind of juxtapose that later on. So after I did these sketches, I went ahead and I came up with this. And so here, let me hide that layer. We have some more developed drawings. And so this is the main drawing that I came up with um, to kind of get a feel for who she is and what she looks like. But you can see here, 
I ended up doing something interesting. I went with the straight arms, right? Which seems like that's there's no gesture there. It's not interesting. But what happened is, if you look at this and what I did with the butterflies and the fingers, there's still an arc. And it continues through almost exactly through that finger that's coming out at the top, and it goes up through where that butterfly is. And the same thing here, but it also happens in perspective, which is really nice as it's coming towards the viewer. And so it really has this cool, nice kind of flare off that seems to really, really exaggerate this feeling of like wholeness and purity and excitement, you know, like this Disney princess kind of vibe with all the the little critters of the forest coming around. And even here with her pose in her lower back, I didn't want her to just stand up straight. Having this tailbone come up like this and showing that come down with the different pleats in her skirt really helps to accentuate what she's doing, the pose, the foot coming up here. This is straight, but then this one is up. It really, really helps exaggerate and show what I want with her personality. And then to completely kind of contradict that this one she's shy she's scared something happened she might have gotten in trouble and everything is very straight but she still fits in a nice little triangular shape here and gesture is something i use very often to help me with shape in that sense and so for this one what i did to change that is she's looking at this family of kittens with the mother cat and she gave her jacket to them to give them some warmth in the cold weather and she's sitting down playfully but still very modest um, and she's curving her back and leaning more to the left side and this is something i still want to rework to really make it sell and i'm moving the arms this way um, to really show that she's moved by this action um, and then she's tilting her head back like that and now what i want to do oh one more thing though a little bit more difficult to kind of show um, depending on how experienced you are looking for gesture is you can really add it to a lot of little details. So for me, I was really, really happy and enraptured by this cons kind of spiral that's going on here because I really want to draw you in to her eyes and to see how sweet she is as a person, as a character, as her personality. And so I have her hair coming down in this arc here like this, but then her head is tilted down like that. And you kind of have this kind of spirally thing going on where it's pulling you down, but then you have different arcs in her body pulling you back up this way. And it kind of keeps you drawing in. You have this arc for her eyebrows, bringing you back into her face more and more, her smile cutting off there. And so it's kind of drawing you in further and further into her face there, into her eyes, which is something I think, especially once I get this painted, I want to continue to refine these shapes more and more to continue that, to really have that effect to where the moment you see her, you want to just keep looking and it draws you in almost like a trance there. Um, so I want to, before I get into the demo where I do a few, let's, I want to decide and see if I can come up with a few more um, sketches for her posing, but I want to go back here and show you um, how I kind of approach studying gesture in a few different ways. Cause I want to leave you guys with a way to kind of not just see how I do it, but to have something you can do um, for yourselves. Um, after this. So one thing that I like to do is take get these photos of people who aren't exaggerating their gesture. And you want to start to learn to look for two things. Um, first is going to be what I call like the overall human blob. People, when especially they're at rest, they're always going to be trying to find balance and balance their bodies. And so they always have these really nice appealing shapes overall for their bodies. And you may not see it, but I'm going to show you here and you're going to get to be able to notice it is that there's always this really nice, let me make my brush smaller. You can see she's kind of like bulging her belly out right there, right? She's leaning back and then you see this arc back with the legs, which is really in line with anatomy a lot of times, just because of the way how our legs muscles are mostly on the back there. And you see this kind of shape here. And if we include her clothing, it's a very, very obvious bulge in the center, and then the head comes out like that, right? And so if I just erase that center piece there, you can see it's a very nice flowy shape there. Even on something, somebody so small and skinny as this, that's the overall shape. And you can see it here. I picked this drawing to be the, the to make it obvious for you to see that this nice aesthetic of this leaning back and then coming back in for the legs there. 
this is a shape you're going to see almost every single person have with their neck and the spine curving back in with those three different sections. You see that again here. Person is very, very straight, but you see that overall curve there. This can also be part of your you know, line of action practice to be able to identify that. But in this case, you're not going to see that curve back. She's leaning back, so she kind of cancels that curve out. And so it's a very nice straight shape there. So if we hide the drawing, you can see it's pretty nice. It's a pretty cool shape, appeal, appealing shape overall. And it's going to be really good for you to be able to see this. Even here, this might look like she's just standing up straight, not really doing much. But what I see is a curve like this, a slight curve like this, accentuated by her clothing. I always include that. Make sure you think about the clothing when you're thinking about gesture, especially for characters, because they're not always going to be doing crazy jumps and different poses like that. And so this is straight coming down, and I curve it down a little bit here. And then you can see we will put the head back in like this. If I hide that, you can see that's a nice pleasing shape there. And then this is a nice accent to it where you have the part on the left kind of bringing you up that way and so this is yeah this is how i go through this is one more guy i thought was really cool he has this really exaggerated bend to the back with his legs but then if you look at the center line for his belly here you can see we can easily get that shape again this kind of gesture blob is something I really try to find with characters, especially when I'm looking at just regular pictures of people. This can tell a lot of character for somebody without you having to do all kinds of crazy stuff because at the end of the day, a really good character drawing or character sheet is going to tell you a lot without you having to say a lot. That's something you wanna do across anything with your art. Um, but on the other hand, the second thing is I want to show you how gesture can really help you inform your shapes, which is going to help you make appealing decisions and help you figure out how you're going to get these tricky things like hands to work properly. So if we look at her hand here, I wouldn't just go in trying to figure out all of the different parts of her fingers and all that. I would just go in and see this is very straight, right? This is an easy opportunity to take right where her pinky knuckle is, the main knuckle, going all the way down to her wrist. I'm going to make that a straight line. And then I'm going to look at make that a box for her wrist there. And I'm gonna make it a straight line all the way to her thumb right there. And then I see that there's a straight line here. And then I would just mark that curve. And then there's a straight line. And so that's something I would draw on my paper to see, okay, that's how I'm gonna get this hand to look cool. And then I would just make a circle here. And so that is an appealing shape that would be easy for me to even without having seen the drawing to just fill in. I can think about how the form of the hand has this little pocket here and think about all the different fat and muscle groups in the hand. And then I can just have fun thinking, okay, how do I want the fingers to actually work out? This is the shape that I started with. I know it looks good. I know it's a decent silhouette. I can just figure out however many passes it needs to be to figure out how to get that hand to work. And then when I want to think about how the anatomy works here, I think about the curves. So this is always going to get better with your anatomy knowledge as you practice both back and forth. I can do this right here because I know the bundle of muscles is lower, closer to the elbow in the forearm. That's really all you need to know. Make a chicken, you know, like the classic chicken thing with the meat, the, uh, the bone at the other end. Um, just do that. And then I have the bump for the elbow right there. And having those kind of lines helps you get your gesture to be really nice. And so if I were to continue to do this and just sketch over and kind of imagine her anatomy under there, I just look for different things like this um, pinch movement here. And then I think about the different anatomical landmarks that would be here. So I know her rib cage is gonna be here. There's gonna be some sort of pinch of skin. This is a stretched area. So I'm gonna leave that to be straight and curved. And then at some point we're gonna hit her, um, her pelvis bone. And then we're gonna come out for those curves that I mentioned before for the leg. And then we're going to go straight, and then we're going to come out again, and then we're going to go straight, right? I'm going to go straight here. That's a design decision. I could instead go in and then come back out for the adductors. Then I could come back in for this curve because we have the sartorius here. Then go straight again, right? And so, but before all this, if I was doing it on my own sheet of paper, 
it would be even more appealing because I would just start off with a curve like this and start off with a straight like this and really accentuate that. Um, something else that's really good to look for is these movements where you have this curve and then to counter it, you're going to have a pinch right here. Right. And that's something that you can kind of force on a lot of different things. So you can see that she's leaning and putting more weight on this. Her center of gravity is closer to the right side here. So this we could simplify as one curve. And then say the pinch is here. And if you wanted to, you can make it even a really dynamic pose by just forcing her to, uh, if we can bring that in a little bit more, to really arch her back and throw her back all the way back like this, like that. And then we can say, okay, maybe we want this kind of shape going on here, right? One leg is straight and it's the, it's the one that's gonna hold up most of the weight. And then we have one like this and just bring that gesture all the way back like that. And then one arm like this, and then we kind of bring that arm out like that to continue this energy this way. Um, so that's how I like to think when I'm looking at something and I see a little bit of a a little bit of a tweak or a moment or a bend somewhere. I just push it all the way here. She's slightly leaning to the back here. I would just take it and push her all the way, just like that here. This guy slightly has his um, belly pushed out. I would just push it out all the way and really try to complement that with the drapery of the clothing that he has here and make it would just be an incredibly awesome drawing. Um, and even with something like this, for the hand, drawing a hand pointing towards you is really tricky. It's not easy to do. But what I see is I see this nice arc like that. That's all I draw on my paper. And then I can just be like, okay, I can complete that shape. Boom. I can just offset that again one more time. Paying attention to the fact that the pinky is close, so it's going to be right there. But there's still going to be a little bit of distance here. And I'm like, all I got to do is fill the fingers in. Then here, straight, curve, right? And then curve here, and then another straight. And I'm just using, picking a curve versus a straight by just the basics of anatomy. Where's the bigger bundle of muscles located on the left or right side? Even on a figure like this, you can see this overall curve. And then, boom, we've got a pinch right there, right? And so that's really, really helpful. Once you start seeing that, you can use that to kind of start layering more and more and more information there. And that's how you get to those really, really detailed sketches that I had before, like these, where every line just builds on top of each other with gesture. And I just continue to follow these different decisions that I make here. So I hadn't even studied um, arms, arm anatomy very much here at this point. But I knew that I wanted to offset those straights and I don't want to have, you never want to have this thing going on here. I said I wouldn't go into the kind of basic gesture facts, but some are just really, really, really good. Don't want to draw this stuff. Don't draw like intestines, right? You want to draw chain links. Way more appealing. Don't draw like this kind of thing. Um, you always want to have that offset pattern with every single straight and curve that you have going on here. Even if it's just subtle, it really, really helps. So. Now I think we have quite a bit of time left to just dedicate to looking at some examples here. So I'm going to show you live how I approach this type of thing. I have some examples here of poses I think would be pretty good to start from that May would be in. And so let's start from the first one. I'm going to try to go quickly with these so that we can decide if one of them is a lot better than the other. And so I'm immediately seeing her head is tilted to that side and her body is tilted to the right. And so what I'm going to do is for me, I just like to, I like to get in those important parts first. I'm going to try to also be drawing the way I normally would draw as well for this. And while I do this, I want to tell you about how, what it looks like um, to get better at gesture. Um, gesture is something that is going to be a thing you practice separately, but also a thing that will always stay with you. Eventually, gesture is always going to show up in your artwork, whether you're intending for it to or not. And you can always practice it individually in order to up on it 
right? Um, it's not going to be something that where you're starting off with the like, oh, Josh, you didn't start off with the, uh, the, the line of action. That's something you can study and pay attention to and make sure it's there, but you're not going to be drawing the line of action first in every drawing you do. Guarantee you that. Eventually, you're just going to have your own way of drawing that makes sense to you, that's fastest to you, and you're going to keep doing it and get used to it. Um, and that's going to help you be more proficient as an artist. Um, but every time you study gesture, all of your drawings are going to get better consistently. And gesture is going to be that thing that is like style that comes with experience and awareness as well. So when you're studying something new, you're not going to see much gesture in your work. It's not going to be that pretty. But once you start to understand it, your gesture studies, your understanding of gesture is going to start to come back. You're, start, you're going to start to draw things fluid, and it's going to make a lot of sense with how you approach it. And that's going to be a really good way to know that, okay, I've reached a point in whatever I'm studying where I'm really, really comfortable with this topic, and maybe you want to move on with something else, or maybe you want to decide, hey, now I want to work on a bigger project. Um, but yeah, always remember, gesture is something that is a is a passive skill. Um, another type of passive skill is going to be perspective. You're just going to draw things in perspective without really having to struggle once you get better. Um, same thing with anatomy. You're just going to start drawing things with correct anatomy without having to struggle and put a lot of effort into it. I can put in, you see the anatomy I'm putting into the leg right now. For me, that's not too much effort. But if I want to do that for the arm, I would slow down and my I would make tons of mistakes because I'm not very used to the arm. It's I still have to sit there. I'm like pronation, supination. I'm like, I don't know. Um, but fortunately, I've tried and practiced drawing the arms with just gesture in mind, knowing those different parts I was talking about earlier. And I can do that first, find something that looks good, and then come back and say, okay, let's let's try to get the anatomy right. Um, and another tip is when you're practicing gesture, focus on gesture. Don't worry about anything else. Um, focus on, am I getting the shape how I want it to? Am I getting the feeling across? Is this really what I want? You can come back and refine it later, but you want to get that the point across. You can study gesture slow and fast. You can study um, by doing very quick, short drawings. That's really good. But you can be very slow in that process and really slow down and say, OK, um, which line do I want to make? I can be way more precise with this drawing, for example, and think, is this the drawing I want? Is this the line I want here? And it might take you like 10, 15 minutes. And it looks the same as your quick gesture drawings, but you're really taking it slow. And you really want it to be either a nice drawing or you just want to take the time to allow your brain to figure it out. So a lot of people ask me, it's like, which is better than the other? It's like, no, you got to do both. They're both excellent ways to study and practice. Um, but doing both is always going to be better because you're going to learn different things and it's going to inform you about different things along the way. So yeah, for this one, I think I had forgotten that this person is supposed to be 16 years old. So I had like a little bit too much definition, <laughs> but I think that's a pretty good place for that one for now. Let's move on to this one where she's sitting. And I'm thinking again immediately about that curve right there. And then I'm going to think about that shape that we talked about, this uh, the kind of gesture blob. And I'm going to see if I can make it. I like to give shoulders to it sometimes. The shoulders can be a really, really big part of gesture as well. I'm going to Make this a straight for the arm here, and then just make that curve just to suggest, you know, what's going on with the clothing there. Even though I'm not really trying to go for that clothing because I'm going to use this for my character. Let's see here, I'm just going to bring that in. I'm trying to think about what I want that shape to be. Bring the legs down. And then I'm just going to make the legs into one shape. I really like how this foot is coming up that way. So I'm going to curve out that way. And I noticed that the pers perspective is like that. So I'm going to make sure I keep track of that to know that 
the knee that's closest to us is higher up, higher than the knee that's farther away. And I make a circle like that, so I know which direction the face is pointing in. So now I'm gonna come back and add some details here. Thinking about the bottom of the head, the neck is also very important to think about for gesture. There's a lot of information that you can tuck in there. And I add her bundled hair and just throw in some, some glasses there. This kind of helps me keep everything in mind, all things considered with what I'm doing. I like the idea of her arms kind of bending outwards. I'm using a series of curves and straights to try to show that without thinking about the anatomy too, too much. And then here I'm thinking about that top flat part of her skirt. The idea of like some of her shirt coming out, maybe she doesn't have her jacket on in this situation. And that forearm, some mass there, and then having that straight line to contrast it. And her tie, that. And then in this case, I'm trying to imagine, think about what her skirt would be doing here. Think about how I can have it as a design element, what it could possibly do. Maybe it folds down like this. We draw a triangle in for her hands like that. And then get her knee back in here for a second. Remember the knees facing kind of away from us. Got a nice curve in there for her calf. I always like adding curves like this for the feet to start off with because they really show what I want to do. I love also to do for feet, I love to do a circle and then either a square, depending on if they actually are wearing shoes like this girl is right here, or if they're not wearing anything, then I'll just have a circle here for the back for the heel. And that really helps me keep things in perspective here. Cause when you can start to combine perspective and, and gesture at the same time, things get really, really nice. Your drawings can get very appealing and tell a lot very quickly. So here, into this. Legs don't really make sense. I think this one, yeah, if you notice in the reference, this is touching. Um, and I think that's really cool. This is bending, right? So I definitely, definitely want to copy that. So I'm going to select the foot here. I really love this feature in Clip Studio Paint. I can just select and move. It's like it, it knows that this is what I want to do and it just gets out of the way. Yeah, I really want that bend. Her feet there. This this might be the one I use. It's giving me like some Spider Verse vibes or something. Um, and I know I'm already running up to a mistake here where I have these knees at the same height. So I'm just gonna force it to be lower. And move this foot down a little bit more. Okay, there. And I want to look at how the foot looks in here. Okay, this knee is more up, so I'm going to keep a circle there, a target there. 
these things are really, really helpful to do. So I'm already, you can see, I've already really captured this emotion of where she's just kind of sitting and she's really leaning forward and supporting her arms like that forward. Um, and one of the different ways that really, really helps. It's just one of the different ways to really show that, right? Even though it's not really anatomically correct, um, the arms really, really pull forward nicely there. Noticing this camera is not on. Hopefully you can fix that really quick. Uh, okay. One second. I'm going to change the battery. Because I know you guys like to see my hands. It's always a good thing. And unfortunately, it's stuck. All right. Well, you have the screen. <laughs> unfortunately, the... the stuck there but yeah um yeah so i think that would be good for here the only thing i am considering changing is i noticed this open space and so i want to move that over here um and i'm thinking about is this really it's making her shoulders wider, but I can also, you can make your shoulders narrower without moving your whole arm because I like this negative space here. Yeah. I think that was, hmm, is that a good fix? Do I like that? Need to raise her hand up here. I kind of didn't pay attention to the fact that we have this slanted ledge that she's sitting on. Like this. To be honest, I think I like how I have it. I think it just ended up being a little bit different. Maybe I drew it a different perspective. Um, so I'm just going to keep it there. It's one of the things you got to learn too with your when you're doing gesture and you're looking at references. You're not really trying to keep the reference a lot of times, especially when you're looking at the subtle ones. It can be an inspiration for sure, but you may not want to keep what's going on there. And a lot of drawings I have done, I have messed it up or gotten frustrated where I didn't really need to because all I needed to do was accept that, hey, it's not like the reference and that's okay. That's, that's going to happen sometimes. I like the reference. Hey, I drew it at the completely wrong perspective, and that's okay. Um, as long as your drawing works and your drawing looks good, that can be plenty. So here I'm thinking about the curve of the back. Um, and for this one, I want to quickly get down that, uh, that straight leg, even though it is slightly curved. But one thing I might try is just curving the entire body as one. Her head is also looking down. And so I'm thinking about, okay, if I do that, and then I break down the leg, let's break it down with curves and straights again and see how that could look. Now this is kind of tricky. It's a back view from slightly below angle Breaking it down into a mannequin can be very helpful. That's way too far out. Looks like it's more beside her rather than in front of her. So I'm using this arc to kind of guide me first. See if that's where I want things to be. This foot is almost like we're looking at it sideways. So I'm going to leave that there looking like that. And then I'm thinking about the relationship of the feet. I'm drawing an arc for that foot there. And I 
think the signs are flipping and pointing upwards. Like this. This line here, this kind of triangle behind the knees is very helpful to get an idea of where the leg is facing. I just quickly draw that in and apply some gesture lines for the leg anatomy there. And I'm going to come back to this foot. I think I'm going to move it back a little bit, like it is in the reference. And then one thing that I also mentioned earlier is for the gesture, you always want to think about the clothing as well. And so, of course, in real life, her skirt's going to be just going straight down. But I want to use it to, again, like I did in the with the fashion drawings earlier, is pull it out like this so that it kind of contradicts this curve here. And it's just continuing that kind of forward motion. Um, I might even have a sort of a, a bend this way like that to really emphasize that going that way there. And I'm just going to do my own thing for the leg at this point. Pain for where it's coming in. Bring that out myself. an interesting perspective here and I am enjoying the idea of kind of like playing with it even if it's not perfectly accurate yeah I'm really liking the perspective of these feet I think I might stick to this one and this one um, even though this one isn't as resolved seeing the legs and the position of the legs themselves alone is already really, really helpful. And for the upper body, I'm thinking, let's flip the canvas here. I'm thinking maybe we shorten it. One of the things that I did for myself to kind of cheat for this character is give her, um, she has a bun, a bundle of braids at the top of her head, but depending on what's going on, I can take the bundle, she can take the bundle out and then I can use that to my advantage for gesture as well. And so having that point down is a really, really nice effect here. The legs don't really match the figure that she has, quite muscular. Eyes. Um, yes. Okay. So I think at this point it's just refining. So if anybody has any questions, I'd love to take some Q and A. Yeah. Hello, Josh. Um, hey. Thank you so much for this great presentation. Everybody loved it. And also they are delighted with your voice. So <laughs> you know, 
here uh, following you. Uh, so I'm also gonna get some of the questions, the most popular questions. Uh, for example, here from Jonathan, he said, hi Josh, real quick, how do you avoid repeating motifs or designs in your character designs? Example, a stereotypical clothing, faces or poses? Um, a really, really easy way to do that, Jonathan, is to think about who your character is um, before you start designing them. I know a lot of times as artists, we love to just design like what from what looks cool first. But for me, I have a very, very well, a lot of this character is just a specific part of me. And so I immediately have a huge library of all kinds of different poses and things that this person would wear. I know what this person would respond to for all kinds of different questions. And so that keeps them unique. So really what you wanna do, I know it's gonna be frustrating, especially for those of us that like to make a lot of OCs is figure out who your character is, flesh out that character's personality. And if that's really hard for you, learn about how other people and other um, of your favorite characters have been designed and learn about who they are. Um, look into all the different extra um, lore that's out there for them. Um, and that will really help you avoid unnecessary repetition. Uh -huh. uh, another question is from Anonymous, but uh, we can see it's also quite popular. What are your best tips in drawing gestures in perspective? In perspective. Best tip for that is to use, get a, get familiar with someone else's or make your own mannequin for the body. So for me, um, if I were to do a quick overlay for this, which is actually going to be very helpful for me, because this is a tough, <laughs> this is a tough perspective. Um, for example, like for the legs, like this is the type of mannequin I use, and it's a combination of a few different artists I've looked at over the years. I like to draw a straight line, have a curve for the thick part of the leg, go back up, and then there's a curve there for the, where the top of the leg inserts. And so basically a mannequin is just a series of basic shapes, cubes, spheres, cylinders that you can draw in perspective um, that you can reduce different parts to. Then you can draw those cubes, spheres, and cylinders with gesture, right? And then you have yourself something that can give you a lot of help for either refining it or you can keep some of these lines in there like some like this line for example is just the same as this line here except it doesn't have those straight edges i could break it down get that curve break it down again and then keep doing that and then one thing that i've done a lot for the pelvis is i do like this underwear line or one thing that i'll do is depending on the scenario which is easier I just do a trapezoid like this. And these are all shapes that are relatively easy to draw in whatever perspective because they have specific rules, right? You know how to draw a cube. Everybody's learned how to do this thing, right, in school. I remember being amazed, like, oh, all I need to do is draw a cube, is draw two squares, and then connect all the lines, right? And so those are the easiest things that we know how to draw in perspective. And so when you can break down your character into those different things, it gets a lot easier. Sometimes you need to go back to it. Sometimes you don't. Depends on how difficult the pose is, if you've drawn it before. But when you start to do things like this, then you can like think, okay, so after drawing this, I realize I need to tilt this more. So I'm going to delete that whole entire um, trapezoid, and I'm going to tilt it more and give myself more of tilts to her pelvis there. And so immediately that helps get you that um, gesture because the only difference between those rigid lines is you being free with how you draw them. Really, it's it's just that freeness and fluidity, um, and I think that's yeah, that's the best way to get gesture and perspective. Awesome. Here's a new question from Diego. Uh, first, I loved your workshop. So many insights applied. How much time do you recommend for tracing practice analysis of a pose? Um, if you are, I would say it's not about time, but ratio, I would say if you're going to sit down to draw, make it, 
tracing analysis, I'd say make it about a third of your time. I wouldn't say half, um, but I would say between a half to a third because you really want to try, okay, now I want to copy it by looking at my trace. Or now I want to try and do it without tracing. What can I, can I trace by just drawing next to it? Now can I do something without even looking at anything? Those are really, really good. But the tracing part is important, especially in the very beginning. So I'd say in the beginning, um, making it half of the time that you spend is pretty decent. Um, it's not so much about like, oh yeah, I do it for this many hours a week. It's like, if you draw three hours a week, trace for one hour a week, and then the other two hours you want to maximize doing those other types of assignments or maybe half of the time. Um, if you're doing two sessions a day, maybe the first session you draw, you trace half of that session and then you draw freehand the other half, you know, um, that's what I would really recommend. Uh -huh. And uh, another question. Hello, Josh. How can I would one design? Uh, how can we design a good silhouette for a character? How well can gesture play into that silhouette? That's a very good thing. Um, I think for gesture in the silhouette, it's, I think the silhouette is something that is really its own thing. And gesture is really good for that. Um, sometimes it's good to just start off with that instead of like a mannequin or different things like this. Sometimes it's really just best to start off with a silhouette. Um, and see if it looks good and if it's balanced and if the character is recognizable from that silhouette. Um, for example, me having this bun on the top of her head that has this specific kind of shape when I reduce it down really helps identify that. Um, for silhouette, the most important thing is readability um, rather than gesture. But gesture can be an important thing depending on what type of things are in the silhouette. So if there's like, let's say they have like crazy hair that's always flowy. It never goes down. Then you want to think about gesture with how those arcs are moving, right? But if the character is very plain and they're just standing, um, you really want to focus on readability. Like, can I tell this character is this character no matter what they're doing? That's number one. Um, and so that's, that's what I would focus on with silhouette. Awesome. And another very interesting question. Uh, how can I use hair to express the character's personality? Any general tips for hairstyles, especially in a more cartoonish anime style? Yeah, really easy way is like, for example, this character is reasonably relatively reserved. So in a lot of times she has like this bun, right? A professional hairstyle because she also goes to a school that has a uniform, right? Um, that's a really easy way to start to inform the audience with the character's personality right there. Um, another way to do that is, another example rather, is to have a very loose and open hairstyle, something that looks like it doesn't take very much maintenance, right? This, that suggests that this person is completely, they don't have a routine to their life. It suggests that, you know, just going on the extreme here, it suggests that maybe um, they don't care about it. Their cares or interests are in something else. Um, and so thinking about what that hairstyle, how difficult it is, maybe is it expensive? Are there a lot of personal elements in that hairstyle? Maybe there's beads or cultural elements in it that can all help to add to the personality. Um, so yeah, just the hairstyle itself, is this something, which environment is this hairstyle fit in? Um, how complex is it? How much unique things are included in that hairstyle? Um, the color is also a great way to add personality to it. That's like one of the fundamental ways you see in animes a lot of the time. Um, and then, you know, spiky versus smooth, the texture of the hair. Um, all of those things I think are great ways to use hair to help identify the character's personality. Hair is a really, really good way to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, we are approaching to the end. So one last question. Uh, I know that you already said uh, some of this, but uh, just in case, um, hi, Josh, uh, Senate asks, hi, Josh, uh, thank you for all the advice. Where do you find your references and also how do you choose them? Where I find my references, most 
usual typical place is going to be pinterest.com um what i like to do is find some references and then i scroll and let the suggestions give me suggestions i don't really type in specific things um and i choose them based off of i'd say two things um three things for me the first is going to be lighting so i like to find references that have nice clear forms showing like this right you see this nice transition shadow here um these nice shadows here i tend to avoid references that are very you i won't have an example because i just won't save it let's look at the this one um yeah i tend to avoid anything that has very everything is very evenly lit because that just makes it really hard to draw i like where there's very very clear dynamic shadows and direct lighting like this really helps me figure out what's going on with the anatomy here as we can see this is wrapping around here the the pectorals going back to the to the humerus there and the second thing i look for is going to be you know again gesture like what's the pose what's going on is it dynamic is it interesting like this person standing there um is really cool because she's pushing her shirt and arching her back in a unique way. This one, there's a lot of these characters, people <laughs> who are showing off their outfits and a lot of them are standing in like a really rigid way. And I don't pick those. I pick the ones that are, I find are more interesting. She's standing with her hip, like kind of contrapposto there. She's leaning back and she has a specific expression on her face with the drink. I find that pretty interesting. Um, so whatever I find interesting and looks like something, it would be something cool to draw, I pick that. And then, the last thing I believe is going to be perspective. So these are things I pick for study, but I would never draw this for something I want to draw. This right here, this one would be something I'd want to draw because I love like dynamic perspectives like this because I find even though they're really tough, it's really, really rewarding. And there's always something different about it. I don't like having to draw things that are mirrored or the same on the left or right. I like everything to be different. Um, so if we look at this one, the arms are different. The legs are mostly different here. Each side of the face is going to be a completely different approach. The hip is going to be a pretty different approach on both sides. Same for this thing here. Like every single part of it is going to be a different approach. I can draw all of the folds here, but here it's not about the folds. It's about the silhouette here. It's about emphasizing that highlight on the back. This dynamic angle just makes everything different and contrasty and everything relates to each other and has something to say um, to give more information that the other side didn't have, right? Just looking at the shadow, it's a different shape and it's at a different height. I like those types of things when I look for references. Um, it just makes it, I get bored a lot less fast when I work from references like this. So those are my three tips for refs. Uh -huh. So with those great, tip, great tips, uh, we are wrapping up uh, our first presentation. Thank you so much, uh, Josh. Uh, it's really insightful. We learned a lot. And we also want to thank uh, our audience today at uh, your workshop. And before we go, um, we want to say, don't forget to follow Josh on social media. Um, stick around for a special giveaway you will find the link in our chat and you can enter the giveaway throughout the break for more detail more details check out the giveaway link and let the moderator know if you have any questions we also have many fun videos and tips and tricks during the one hour break our next lesson uh, our next session anatomy with i'm justino will start at 12 p.m uh, california time so thank you so much, Josh. No problem. My pleasure. This was exciting. <laughs>